guys! So in today's video, I'm going to be photographing all this art and more. I plan on making a professional gallery online as well as starting to sell prints, so I'm going to need really good photos for that. I have made a similar video in the past, but that dealt more with taking photos on my phone and editing them with free software or free apps online. That was more the cheaper way to do it because I am a college student, I can't afford the best technology all the time. However, recently I was able to get this great new camera that I'm so happy to have and I decided to retake some photos and also photograph all the other paintings that I've never photographed before because I just have so many. So if you don't have a great quality camera or if you only have your phone, that's perfectly fine. A lot of people have to do that. I had to do that. You can still make some great quality photos without a great camera. You just need to have the skill with lighting and editing and that comes with time and practice. So you can go check out that other video for some tips and suggestions I had. However, getting a professional camera just makes it a lot easier. You're already on the way to a great quality photo and you have to do less editing. So I'm pretty excited to just start getting my art career up and running. Today it is looking to storm in the afternoon, but right now it is bright and sunny, so I'm hoping that I can get some work done while it's still sunny out, um, try to beat that storm, at least get a decent amount of photos taken, and I'm hoping it's not too windy. That's my biggest concern. Anyway, I'm gonna go set up now. For materials, I use a mini easel, a drawing board, tape, and a tripod. Any flat pieces of art or anything made out of paper, I taped to the drawing board and then I placed on the easel. And then I lined my tripod up so that the angle would match the angle of the drawing board. I took these photos outside so that I could get the best lighting, but I also took them underneath the umbrella so that they wouldn't be in direct sunlight. That way I wouldn't have a glare, but I would still have optimum lighting. Luckily I was able to take all of these photos before it started raining, but it was really windy and sometimes things would blow away. That made it complicated. I was just happy that my camera didn't fall over at any point. For canvases or sturdier pieces of art, I placed them directly on the mini easel so I didn't have to use the drawing board for those. Then I took multiple different pictures with different settings just to see how they would come out so that once I started editing, I could choose the best version. Once I started editing, I chose the best version of the picture. For some of the pictures, there were drastic differences between the settings, but for others, there wasn't much of a difference, so it didn't matter as much. Once I chose the version that I wanted to keep, I opened it up in Photoshop. I cropped and angled the photo so that I could get as much of it as I wanted while leaving out all the background. Then I used the blur and the blender tools to go over the art to take out any unwanted marks. If there was a scratch or a dot on the painting, I could easily just go over it. Also, if the edges of the piece weren't complete, I could use those tools to fill that out. For this specific piece, I decided to crop it even more because I felt that there was too much empty space in the top and the right corner, and I just felt it looked better with these parts cropped out. I then used the tools for contrast and brightness, for levels, and also for vibrance and saturation to edit the colors and the tone of the paper just to get it to the best quality it can be. I then just smoothed out some of the edges to make it look nicer. And to add contrast to the focal point of the piece, I selected the background, so in this case, the shirt. I added a new layer and then I completely covered that in a dark blue and then lightened the opacity of that layer just to make that part of the piece darker and help the face and the hand stand out more. And then I just did the skin color again to make it stand out more, but also that so that it looks more realistic and not as bright and orange. And since the hand is the closest part of the piece, I wanted that to stand out even more than the face, so I continued to edit that as well. Because I used the select tool to edit different parts, that can make some of the edges a little unclean, so then I just cleaned those up. And then I went in and made any final adjustments that I wanted to make.
And here's a comparison of after I finished editing. Black and white photos do work a little differently than color photos. Again, I started by cropping the image. Then I used the levels and the contrast tools in order to create a drastic contrast to really get that black and white look. I selected the white background in order to make it pure white so that you can't see any of the texture of the paper behind it. And then I inverse my selection so that the white background wouldn't be affected as I made a starker contrast on the actual image. I also used the sharpen tool in order to make the detail stand out a little bit more, since this is a specially detailed picture. And that is how it turned out. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out.